Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2022, but I have to admit, I first saw the concept drawings for this at Watch Time New York in 2021, courtesy of a Laurent Ferrier brand representative. At the time, I didn't know what to think. This is a crowded segment. The integrated bracelet sports watch market is groaning with options, especially in 2023. There are even more now than there were then. So I held my fire and withheld my judgment. Now that I have the watch in my hand, I can tell you what I think, but most importantly, give you the information to decide what you think. So for 2022, we get the Laurent Ferrier Sport Automatic. It is the successor to 2019's intriguing but rare and ruinously expensive Sport Tourbillon. This watch, in grade 5 titanium, is tonneau-shaped with integrated lugs and bracelet, 41.5 millimeters in diameter, 13.2 millimeters thick, 47.7 millimeters from lug to lug if we're just including the lugs, but then we include the end links. If we include these end links here, then it's 51.4 millimeters. So what really matters here is going to be the lug to lug, the 47.7. You'll see when it's on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, the bracelet and the end links fall away. So while this is over 51, end link to end link, you really have to think of it in terms of lug to lug. So you can see the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist on either side. And I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. And though it's not super thin, it is flat enough with a sloped case flank that it'll slide under a dress cuff. And there is something of a formality and majesty to this watch that would make it a good match for formal attire. So it's a sports watch, but it's very versatile. Being Basically all sapphire and titanium, it is very light. The bracelet's nicely made. We'll get closer, take a look. You can see the case flank tapers into the lugs, tapers into the bracelet. The bracelet tapers down from the end link all the way to the clasp. We have polished bevels of varying sizes, and that's how you know it's grade 5 titanium. You can't polish the grade 2 stuff. Primary facets are satinated. Removable links are fixed by screws, which I like. That means it's easy to do this at home. It's the upscale way of making a bracelet. You can see many individual removable links, as well as the presence of a intermediate size link in case you're in between sizes, so you can find the best possible fit. Grade 5 titanium clasp, double deployant with a twin trigger release, so you have to press both triggers to open it, keeping it secure when it is on your wrist. The nice thing about grade 5 titanium is that it has all of the merits of conventional titanium grade 2, which means hypoallergenic, lighter than steel, but grade 5 is harder and more scratch resistant, both compared to grade 2 and standard watch making 904L and 316 steels. So this isn't going to accumulate marks the way a steel watch would. You can see that it is a very 70s look, and that's sort of endemic to this class because the style arose out of the 70s. But what's amusing is when you buy this watch, you get a little race car, a Porsche 935, a replica right down to the livery of the car driven by Laurent Ferrier and two of his compatriots to third overall at the 1979 24 Hours of Le Mans. Fascinatingly, he was actually beaten for a victory by a car driven by Paul Newman. So a great little bit of trivia, and you get a fun model car when you buy this watch. More about the sporting accomplishments of Laurent Ferrier when we get to the back of the watch. We're not there yet. Screw down crown, like other Laurent Ferrier watches, onion style and vintage inspired, meaning unbranded. 120 meter water resistance, white gold hands, as well as applique indices, we have a grained or sandpaper-like dial texture with a crosshair center and an a elaborately deep draw faceted date window. Plenty of loom, we'll take a look at that now. Be an automatic, a base metal, 120 meters water resistant and well loomed. This is a true sports watch through and through. It does not feature hacking seconds, but it does feature a quick set date function. So when you screw the crown out, you get the ability to rapidly set the date. And you can see they used a serif intensive font here, which I happen to like quite a bit. Screw the crown back in. The weirdest thing about this watch is that at a level so small, it's almost difficult to see 
there is text on the center of the platinum micro rotor describing Laurent Ferrier's exploits at the 1979 24 Hours of Le Mans. You could see on the rotor there's small text, and it's definitely describing the circumstances including co-drivers and lap times and date of the race, but it's beyond even the ability of my handheld loop to resolve. What you can see is that this is a directional micro rotor and the winding direction is indicated by little arrows as well as text. Taking another quick look at the other side, you could see that the rotor is made of platinum 950. Not quite as easy to see, but you could see it on the outer circumference of the rotor. And the rotor has several different finishes in addition to the micro text. This movement is based on the galley, or I guess now it's called the classic micro rotor. The main change is the elimination of the double direct impulse escapement for a more durable Swiss lever. The power reserve remains. 72 hours, but the beat rate goes up from 21,600 vibrations per hour to 28,800 vibrations per hour. The higher beat rate being more suitable for a sports watch in that it's less likely to suffer timing deviation due to concussion or vibration. It remains adjusted exceptionally to six positions, one more than a standard chronometer, and free sprung for durability. There's also an overcoil hairspring to allow the watch to keep consistent time no matter what position it's in on your wrist. All of this pivoting way on 31 joules, and you can see that the finish is excellent. The bridges, let me do my best to show you this, the bridges have a mirrored englage that's a mile wide and truly drawn out by hand and finished manually. If you look at the spokes of that center wheel, you can see that the inner circumference of the wheel as well as the spokes micro-beveled, something we often don't see even on Geneva Hallmark movements. You could see in the jewel sinks they have been internally beveled and mirror polished, and then there's a lovely vintage-inspired linear satination across the bridges, which have been nickel anthracite coated along with the base plate. Base plate, you'll note, has been engine turned. And then we have a combination of black polished elements, part of the winding system, the bridge for the rotor, and then the stud holder for the free sprung balance and its hairspring. The screw heads are all black polished with chamfered slots and circumference finish is truly superlative. So while there's not as much here, technically speaking, as you'd find on something like a classic micro rotor or a double hairspring tourbillon, it is nevertheless exactly what you'd expect given the price. It's finely finished, it has an above average power reserve, and with the micro rotor it manages to be both beautiful and fairly thin. If you love this watch, reach out to me. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.